So one of the really cool features in Ableton Live is the ability to use grooves. And grooves are files uh, that look just like MIDI files, for the most part, MIDI clips, that uh, when dragged and dropped onto a MIDI clip or an audio clip, uh, will give that clip a different feel, a different swing, and uh, really change the way that that clip plays back. And that's a cool thing to be able to do just to add a little bit of character to a track that you're working with. So in order to start working with grooves, I just need to access them in Ableton's file browser. And uh, so if I take a look at the file browser here on the left side of Ableton, I've got the different folders that allow me to access uh, different files on my system that I can drop into Ableton. And I need to go ahead and open the library, uh, Ableton Live's library. If I don't see the library, I can just click on the pull down menu up here uh, from one of the file browser folders and select library. This will open the library up for me and then I can double click into the grooves folder. So now in the grooves folder, you'll notice I have all of these uh, different folders that are organized into different types of sounds, rock and percussion, things like that. And so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll play a clip for you guys. I have a clip right here that I've just kind of extracted a percussion part out of that I like. So that's just a pretty basic percussion shaker loop but I want to add a little bit of character to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up some grooves and drag and drop one onto this clip and we'll see how it affects the sound. So you can hear how that really changes the sound of the clip as I drag and drop these different grooves onto it. So of course, I wanna be able to see how this works alongside the rest of my production. So I'll start playing back the drum and I'll see how I feel about that groove that I've applied. So I kind of like that one. I like the Swing 1625. So now that I've got that and I've dragged and dropped it onto my clip, I can go ahead and if I want to be able to make some changes to this, I can open the Groove Pool. The Groove Pool is accessed by clicking the button right down here at the bottom of, of Live's file browser. This opens up the Groove Pool. So now if I have a look at the groove pool, I can take a look at all these different parameters of this groove that I've just applied to this clip. So now what I can do is I can drag and drop grooves into my groove pool if I want. And this allows me to just create a groove pool that I can then use to affect the different clips that are in my live set that I'm working with right here. And now what I can do is I can adjust the settings for some of these grooves if I want to. I can hot swap them using the hot swap mode in, in Ableton. And then I can have a look at some of the different parameters for these grooves. Right here I've got the bass, and the bass determines the timing resolution against uh, how the notes in the groove will be measured. Um, I can look over at the quantize section. This adjusts the amount of straight quantization uh, that is applied before the groove is actually applied. So at 100%, uh, the notes and the clips that I'm working with, they'll be snapped to the nearest note values um, as set in the, uh, in the base chooser. Uh, I've got the timing section, and the timing adjusts how much the groove pattern will affect any of the clips that are using it, and I can adjust that from zero to 100%. I've got the random section, and the random section uh, just adjusts how much random timing fluctuation will be applied to the clips uh, using that groove. So it can kind of add a human feel uh, to a clip even more. So if I bring the random up, that'll change again the feel of that groove and give it a little bit more of a, a kind of a swing to it that comes uh, from a groove. I've also got the velocity section and the velocity changes how much the velocity of the notes in clips will be affected by the velocity information that is stored in the groove file. If I drag and drop a groove into Ableton, I can have a look at that groove and you'll notice that I've got some velocity information right down here at the bottom of this groove. 
So that velocity information is going to be interpreted in the groove that I'm using and then applied to the clip that I assign it to. So the velocity section here will allow me to configure exactly how much that velocity information will actually affect the clip that I'm working with. And then here I've got the amount section. Uh, this is a global parameter and it scales the overall uh, intensity and the timing, uh, the timing, the random, the velocity sections. Um, that just allows me to change exactly how much is going to be applied uh, from these different parameters that I change. So once I've worked with some grooves on a clip, uh, I want to go ahead and actually commit one of those grooves to the clip. So in order to do that, I need to have a look in the clip inspector right here. And again, I access that by just double clicking on the clip. And that's going to open this section. And then if I take a look at the far left right here under clip, I have the groove section. Now again, I can hot swap right here, which is very cool. If I click on the hot swap button, that's going to allow me to hot swap and try out different grooves on this, uh, on this clip as I go along and I don't have to commit them immediately. And then along with this, I have the pull down section. And in the pull down section, I can choose from other grooves that I've applied to this clip. So once I find a groove that I like, I again, I need to commit it to this clip. So in order to do that, I just, I just click on the commit button. And what this is gonna do is it's going to actually change the warp markers for this clip. So I'll show you the difference between that. Here's the before. And then here is the after. So you can really see the difference in the warp markers there. And those warp markers, of course, are going to change how this clip will sound when it plays back which defines how the groove is affecting the clip. So now if I want to edit a groove, what I can do is I can just select a groove and I can drag it. Again, I can drop it onto a MIDI clip. I have to drop it onto a MIDI clip. And then what I can do is I can make edits to it from here. And after I've made these edits, I can extract this groove to a new groove. You can extract a groove from any clip, and to extract a groove, simply right click on the groove and select Extract Grooves. When you do that, you're going to see that new groove show up in your groove pool, and then you can drag and drop that groove onto a clip, and that'll allow you to quickly and easily apply the parameters from the new groove that you created by editing one, or maybe you extracted a groove from another mini clip that you had previously made. And that's an overview of working with grooves. Uh, again, as I say, grooves are really useful for being able to add a good amount of character to a project that you're working on. I hope this has been useful to you guys. And as always, keep in touch with me, Brian at Obedia.com or on Twitter at Twitter.com forward slash Obedia Tutor. And I'll see you next tutorial.